hope my friend with me today, which I hope to have him with me quite often. Uh, I have two friends here with me, one you haven't seen and one you won't be seeing. <laughs> Um, he's, he's our mystery and mystery co-host, but uh, my face other for friend radio. Is, is Michael. Mike is a dear friend for many years, but Mike and I have talked about these subjects together for, over the years, so that's why I thought it would be good to have Mike come in and help me, because Mike is very knowledgeable on a lot of the subjects I talk about, especially in relation to the cults and religions and, and the secret societies and their churches. Uh, and especially interesting to him, Mike's one of the subjects he was very interested in is the Mormon Church, uh, the, uh, what do they call them, Latter-day Saints? Uh, yeah, Latter-day. Yeah, Latter-day Saints. Sin and, today and be a saint tomorrow. Yeah, right. And, uh, and, of course, Joseph Smith, who was the founder of uh, the Mormon Church, what we call the Mormon Church today. He's their first prophet. Yeah, first prophet. But, but what I'd like to get into is, let's talk about the Prince of Darkness, Lucifer. What is he all about? What is this? Who is he? Who well, is look Lucifer? at Malachi Martin on Art Bell. Uh, did a whole couple hours with Art Bell many years ago, and Doctor Malachi Martin was was probably one of the highest ranking Jesuit uh, Catholic theologians in the world. An extremely important man in the Vatican, Malachi Martin, a, a wonderful man. I found I found him to be fascinating, and very honest and decent man, but. Um, he talked about um, when he was he was on like I said he was on Art Bell show, and they were talking about the Vatican and religion and God and all that kind of thing. And he made a statement. Father Malachi Martin made a statement that Art Bell did not catch and didn't follow up on. He said in the program in answer to some question. He said, "Well, Lucifer is not the devil." Lucifer is not the devil. Satan, in the Christian scheme, Satan is the devil, not Lucifer. Lucifer is totally different. And then he, and then Art Bell went on with some other questions, and I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. That is a very important point he just brought out. If I had been the co the host, I would have said, wait a minute, explain that to me. Who is Lucifer then? If it's not the devil, and this is the highest ranking Jesuit theologian in the world for the Vatican, and he's saying, Lucifer's not the devil. You better go back into your homework. Satan may be the devil, but not Lucifer. Now, we're using Satan as a loose term. That Satan is basically just the darkness. Yeah, well, Satan, the very word Satan is a Hebrew term for a lawyer that opposes you in court. That's what, he's, uh, that's what it means in Hebrew. Yes. And the Hebrew, a uh, uh, Satan is a, a Satan. A Satan in Hebrew is a lawyer who opposes you in a court of law. Devil's advocate. The devil's advocate. advocate. Exactly. And so that's where the word Satan comes from in Hebrew for a lawyer who's opposing you. He is your opposer in law. Before the judge, before God, he's opposing you. So therefore, you're in the light. You are like Jesus. You're in the bringing the truth to light. And the guy is opposing you before God, before the judge. Is Satan, as a tan in Hebrew, which is your opposing lawyer. So uh, keep so that how in do mind. We get from a, how do we get from such a loose term as lawyer <laughs> to devil? Yeah into the Christian uh, New well, Testament. Well, because Satan is the opposer, and of course, uh, as, uh, obviously, you are holy, and you are wonderful, and therefore your opposer is evil, obviously. Well, he's the, your opposer is evil. E-V-I-L. Unless See, evil it, wins, and then... Yeah, well, of course, but I would say you take the word evil, E-V-I-L, and put a D in front of it, it becomes devil. devil. So that's why... Uh, <laughs> Two lawyers going at it and back and forth in a courtroom. That's the you know they're, they're playing the devil, the devil's advocate. And so the other guy thinks he's right. Well, I'm the devil's advocate. I think you're wrong. And then and I think I'm right, and then he's the devil's advocate. I think you're wrong. And so and the the judge represents the planet Saturn because he's wearing a black robe. And Saturn was the god of retribution and karma, and he's the god of uh, anything that's Saturnian. Saturnian, my friend here will explain that Saturn was the god of law, it was, a, it was the establisher of law. So anything that's Saturnian that has to do with Saturn is the police department, the, the, uh, the gangs, or mafia, or, or armies, uh, police, as I said, courts, 
prisons, that's all Saturnian, because Saturn was also referred to as the inhibitor. He's the one who holds you back. He so, inhibits you. So let's get back. Let's get onto it. When the judge is sitting on the on the bench, the yeah. bench is a uh, bench uh, in Latin. A bench is a bank, and the reason it goes back to the old ancient world and the ancient Middle East, and they still do it today, and in, in Egypt. When you're in Egypt and you're walking down the streets at the at the uh, at the and you know with all the people selling things in the street, everybody's sitting on 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 mattresses or pillows, and they have in front of them a long bench on which they have the things they're selling. And so, if you stop, which I've done many times in Egypt, buy something, you have to lean down and you're putting the money down, and they're they're taking the money and giving you the product, but you're doing business on the bench. Because it's a bench. And so in Latin, bench means bank. So therefore, when we say the judge is ruling from the bench, the judge is ruling for money. He's ruling for the bank. You know, he's just a referee. Well, that's it. That's all he is, is a referee, and he's wearing a black robe. That's where when judges walk into a courtroom, everyone rises in a courtroom. Why? Because when a Catholic priest walks onto the altar, everyone in the church rises. It has to do with ancient Roman Saturnian law. Jordan, yes. in relation to the bank, um, those judges, they're a branch of the executive department. And if you look on the Internet, you will see the president was assassinated. His agents were not the Secret Service. They were Treasury agents. Mm. That's who protects the president, is the agents of the Treasury, now known as Department of Homeland Security. And anyone's free to verify that on the Internet. So, Explain that. Well, you have a judge who's sitting on a bench, which means bank, mm -hmm. and the president, uh, his agents are agents of the Treasury Department. That has something to do with money in banks. Mm -hmm. And those judges are now, since we have, for all intents and purposes, administrative tribunals, they're a branch, they're, they're an um, arm of the executive branch. Mm -hmm. The executive branch, the president, is guarded by agents of the Treasury, now known as Department of Homeland Security. Because you have to secure the federal debt with something. That's you and me. And then the judges are sitting on the bench. So everything you're saying, when you look at the facts and add it all up, that in point of fact is true in my mind. Mm. This is why when you're born on your birth certificate, on the lower left-hand side of a birth certificate, down at the corner, it will tell you that this birth certificate is the property of the Department of Commerce. Precisely. And I've seen birth certificates <coughs> from the Philippines that say internal revenue. And the Philippines at one time were a territory of the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about all this. And getting back to this whole thing about uh, judges and law and, the, and Satan. And as I said, Dr. Malachi Martin said that Lucifer is not the devil. Well, you know who Lucifer really is. The Bible tells you specifically who Lucifer is, and he's not the devil. Satan is the devil. And again, devil is simply the word evil with a D in front of it. Like God is the, the root word for God is the same word for good. So you take a O out of good and it becomes God. God is good. God the is devil good, yeah. is evil, right? But who is Lucifer? Well, the fact of the matter is the Bible says Lucifer is Jesus. Jesus is Lucifer. That's in the scriptures. That's in the book of Revelation. Go get the old. Go get the New Testament of the Bible, and in the book of Revelation, Revelation twenty two sixteen, Jesus says, and it's quotes. It's quoting Jesus, and he said, "I, Jesus, I am the bright morning star. I'm the offspring of David, and I am the bright morning star." So this is Jesus saying, "I am the bright morning star." And that's and, verified in the Catholic Encyclopedia online. That's exactly right. That. It will say so, Lucifer is the planet Venus, and then it refers to also Peter in uh, the book of Revelation. <clears throat> that's it right. It finally applies to Jesus Christ himself. Yeah, and the, and the Catholic Encyclopedia, because there are two places. Uh, for, uh, the first one, as I said, is in, in Revelation, and the other one is in Second Peter in the New Testament where Peter says it uh, talks about the bright morning star when he is coming, the Messiah, the bright morning star. Well, look up the word bright morning star in the, in the, uh, in the Bible dictionaries, Bible encyclopedias. Go to any good um, um, reference work or any good, uh, what am I trying to say, seminar, 
uh, seminarian library. Go to any good seminary library and get the encyclopedias and dictionaries of Christian religion and look up the word Lucifer. And it will tell you Lucifer is Jesus. Uh, he is the bright morning star. And the very word Lucifer means bright morning star. Bright morning star means Venus. And when you observe the orbit of Venus over a number of years, it describes a pentagram in the sky. That's right. Exactly. And they've been told in other faiths that Lucifer is Jesus' brother. But then again, if Jesus is the son, we're not talking about a man. We're talking about the literal son. Yeah, and, S-U-N. S-U-N. Mm -hmm. And Lucifer is actually the planet Venus. And mm -hmm. Set is, is the, the, the prince of darkness the prince in of Egypt, darkness. the prince of darkness. And of course, you know, when you get into Christianity, uh, we're talking about the war between light and darkness, between the sun and between the, uh, the darkness at night. So it's, you know, the darkness has 12 hours to rule the world, and the sun has 12 hours to rule the world. So it's an equal battle, back and forth, back and forth. And this is why we're told that Jesus will return. And he's, he will return. He le and when he left, he left the world in the hands of the prince of darkness. Well, of course, when the sun goes down, the prince of darkness in Egypt was called Set. That's why it gets dark at sunset. So... Uh, the Prince of Darkness uh, rules the world for 12 hours until God's Son, the light of the world, comes back and saves us. Yeah, but when you say God's Son, you're actually saying that S -U -N. Jesus... S-U-N. S-U-N, but you're saying Jesus himself never existed, correct? Yeah, I'm saying Jesus never existed, but the entire story of Jesus in the New Testament, the entire story from Matthew to Revelation, is a profoundly important work on the world scene. I am saying the Bible and the New Testament uh, and the Bible is an incredibly important story. It's got all the most in, uh, important knowledge and wisdom and understanding woven into the story of the New Testament. But you have to know how to read it, to see it. I mean, that's why Jesus, it has Jesus himself saying, you, uh, you have eyes, but do not see. You have ears that do not hear. And with your heart, you do not get the sense of it. So and you're so, saying that all the priests, the cardinals, the bishops, even the Pope himself. Has no idea in the world of the real hidden uh, truth in the New Testament. It's hidden. And that's so, what, so none of them actually none, studied none astro them. theology or went through it or even none, none of the no the Catholic theologians Catholic uh, and I've talked to Jesuit theologians and, and privately when I'm talking to them I sat and talked with them in in uh, in St Louis when I was there visiting some friends so that's a home of Jesuits up there in St Louis and New Orleans certain places in America that uh, that they're very prominent. And the Jesuit theologians that I talked to said, yeah, we understand the whole entire story of the New Testament is astral theology. We know that. So, but, but so then, Yeah, but then uh, what's the whole idea behind the resurrection and, and uh, the nuns in the wedding dress to Jesus and the, and the offerings? And the, and, well, the and, reason for the nuns is very simple because in Hebrew, N-U-N-N, -N, nun is a fish. In the, in the Hebrew language, a nun is a fish. So that's why you have the, the nuns running around. They're fish. And that's why the nuns are always in charge of the schools, because that's where you find schools fishers fish. in the schools. And, uh, and the priest, and the, and the leading priest, the Holy uh, Father, he wears a fish head. I mean, the, the fish's mitre is a, is a fish head. Is that Dagon? Or, or? That's right. Dagon, the fish god. And, Jordan, when you look <coughs> at a nun's body, you got ten little piggies, two calves, right? Yeah. An, an ass and a fish no one can find. Yeah, I know. It's an incredible, <laughs> when you get into the occult symbolism, going back into the actual and fact no, no, symbolism. Wait, I, have, I have to ask this on the air. You're trying to tell me that the priests, the bishops, and the cardinals know that Jesus is just a metaphor. Yes, there's no doubt in my mind that's, about that's, that. So when you say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned, and you're going in there for absolution, yeah. you're getting it from the Son? The literal sun in the sky? Who's no, he? no, no. You're How getting it from him? him. You're getting it from him. You're getting it from him. How about changing the body and blood? Yeah, well, that's all symbolic. Symbolic of what if the man never existed? Yeah, I know that. <laughs> it's symbolic of a covenant. Yeah, are you talking uh, about Bacchus? It's going back to the, to the <coughs> wine right. god and, and Mithrin <coughs> rites and so forth? That's exactly right. The, the, the Bacchus was the god of wine and reverie. And this is why on the church, uh, on the altar, in the, uh, on Sunday mornings on the altar, you'll see the bread, the wine. Yes. That goes back to Bacchus, Bacchus, the, Bacchus Dionysus, the, the sun god. He was God's son who died on the cross. He was 
12 helpers, his mother was a virgin. It's, uh, it's the same story. So basically this was constructed just to take the kasef, the silver, from the man's pocket. This whole thing was just, you're saying it's just a made-up story. Yeah. Well, also, too, though, Michelangelo didn't have access to the Bible. It was, that was illegal for them to have a copy of that. And that was on TV. They were talking about that, his relation to the Pope. I mean, that Bible, that was for the priest only. That's a symbolic language. When you look at symbolism, symbolism on one level is saying one thing but meaning another. Mm -hmm. And that was, the common man was never supposed to have access to this stuff. I, I had a friend that was over in, in, uh, in Vent, Ventura, California, and he was telling me, he's a Catholic, and he said, I was at, I was at church, and, uh, and the priest uh, said uh, that the that the sermon that morning was going to be on the on the the story of Jesus as a metaphor, and he went into the whole, and he said from the pulpit the, the priest is talking about Jesus was a metaphor. He, he represented the sun, and the twelve apostles were the twelve signs of the zodiac. You the have people nailing of, themselves to a cross in the Philippines where this, I, I know, and you have I mean people walking on their knees for miles for. The resurrection of Christ. And I have no idea in the world what Christ means. The very word Christ. You so the, there call. isn't a priest out here who could who could actually debate this? Is there any theologian of what we're talking about that could actually come forth and, and debate this? Because we'd like to hear from you. Well, actually, let me, let, me, let me stop you and say, I don't intend to debate anybody, but I would challenge. Uh, better yet, challenge, uh, yeah, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, that, that's a better one. Challenge you to prove what you are saying about Jesus uh, prove it, and you will find they can't prove it. Because, Can you hear that? You have yeah. to be able to prove it. Prove that the story of Jesus actually existed, existed was yeah. true. It's literally and factually true. Yeah, because the Bible is referred to as the greatest story ever told, and it is. I have the highest admiration for the New <clears throat> Testament story of Jesus. It is the greatest story ever told. Of that, there is no doubt in my mind. But it is not talking about a literal man. It is a story. The Bible is called the greatest story of a told, not the greatest collection of historical now, has there facts. Has ever been any astrotheologians that have ever debated this? Has, there any, has the church ever come forth from what you know? Oh, no, no. The church will not discuss this in public ever. They don't want to hear it. They don't, <laughs> I don't want to talk to about laugh. it. It's just the way, but if you, if you the way sit... you're saying it. <laughs> I mean, but... it seems impossible. You have billions of people throughout the world. Yeah. believing in Jesus, that this man actually, a kinsman redeemer, came down to this earth yeah. and existed. And you're telling me, no. No, there was no Jesus. And I'll tell you <laughs> what else. I, I, not only was there no Jesus, the whole story of Jesus in the New Testament is a very important story. I'm not taking away from the story. I'm saying it is a very important story. But it's not based on someone who actually lived. There was, in fact, no man named Jesus. And if you go, and, and uh, even the church theologians I've talked to admit, well, there's no way we can prove he existed. It's a faith. That's what we call it. We have faith in Jesus. We have faith in it. Well, yeah, but if you're going into court, in a federal court, and your life is on the line, you don't want to go in there and plead your case on the basis of faith. Well, I just know this is true. No, no. You better bring in facts. You better be able to prove it to a So the Sanhedrin who put him to death, who, who came forth, I think it was the Sanhedrin, correct? <laughs> yeah. Who put him to death? Yeah, who, but, but that is a, it's a metaphor. I mean, the whole idea that Jesus was put to death, uh, first of all, it's a metaphor, but when it says that the, uh, that the um, Pharisees judged him at night you know they held they held a night court so right, to speak right and they brought him in before the pharisees at night to to hear him and to judge him that's a metaphor that never happened but it's a symbolic metaphor and the, what it's telling you what that story is telling you is that jesus said i am the truth and the light okay no man comes to the father unless he comes through me that is a metaphor, which means if you're going to talk about God, if you really are going to legitimately try and communicate with the divine presence in the universe that men call God, then you better go there without your silly ass religion. You just forget your silly religion and all your, your ideas and theology. You better go before God with spirit and the right spirit and truth. If you don't have the truth, then you better shut up because you're talking to God. And God knows, and that's why we even say, you know, God knows that this that this stuff you're pushing in the churches is not truth. It's a belief system. So if you're going to go before God, you better go with the right spirit 
and with the truth. And if you don't have the truth, you better stay out of the presence of God. Well, when you go into a church, <clears throat> a Catholic church, the first thing you visually see is the crucifix, a man dying on the cross and the 12 stations of the cross. Yeah. How he died, the 12 stations. 12 seems to be a very important number. <clears throat> Again, 12 stations, 12 signs of the zodiac, 12 months of the year. God's son, uh, Jesus is referred to as God's son, the light of the world. Well, of course, the sun is the light of the world. What the hell else lights the world and, that isn't the sun? And the 12 labors of Hercules. The 12 labors of Hercules, the 12, the 12 stations of the cross. It's the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year, the 12 tribes of Israel. The so you're 12 trying to apostles. tell me that all... all of this is the 12 based on the 12 signs of the zodiac and the God's son, the master of the 12, and that makes it 13. 13 is an unlucky So everybody's just, just biting <clears throat> on the story and just making money any which way they can That's on a right. man that never existed. On a That's man that never existed. Never existed. Making billions a year on a man that never existed. No such man ever existed. Yeah, I, I think what it is is uh, these are like people watching a movie projected onto a screen, and they're actually going up and kissing the screen. They're seeing the play before them, and they're not real. That's just light projected on a cloth. But they're actually, they want to go up to the screen and actually kiss the damn thing. Yeah. You're saying that the, that the Jesuits themselves would admit to this story? Oh, yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. They know exactly, because I've talked to too many Jesuits. And they say, yeah, we understand. It's a metaphor. And I said, did you understand the, the whole uh, astrotheology metaphor? Absolutely. Yeah, we know that. And I said, well, why... Why are you allowing people to believe that there really was a man named Jesus? And he said, look, it's a religion. It's a conceptual idea. And this is the, you have to give the people something to believe in. So we take the story of the old astral theology story that you're talking about, and they, and they put it into human terms. So when the sun dies on the cross, the cross is the north, east, west, and south, which is news, N-E-W-S, north, east, west, and south. Right. Which is the which is on the the four corners of the of the zodiac, uh, spring, summer, autumn, winter. So it's the four points of on the on the compass, and the sun dies on the cross because it's a southern cross. When it crosses in, into the southern sky, the sun stops on its lowest point on December twenty second, and down south. And so there's a there's a configuration of stars, a constellation in the southern hemisphere called the Southern Cross, and the sun is on the Southern Cross when it stops and doesn't go any further. On December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, the sun stops and does not go any further. And where it stops, it stops right on what we call the Southern Cross. So therefore, the sun is dead for three days on the cross. Yeah, it's the, it's the, the Southern Cross in the, in the constellation of the Southern Cross in, in Brazil, in South America. And so then, and then on these, that's for three days, the sun stays on that same cross, December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. But on the 25th, it moves one degree northward, one degree. The U.S. Navy has uh, instruments that can tell you it just moved one degree northward, which means it's going to begin its annual journey back to the northern hemisphere. So they say the sun. So we say God's sun is born again. Born again. It's starting to move again. Let me again. ask you a question. How about all the martyrs? How do you get away with, with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and all the other apostles who supposedly died? They have all the shields up. One was uh, burned to death, another one with arrows, another one fed to the lions, and so forth. Is that just stories? Did that actually happen? Well, Polycarp, one of the very first Christians in the first century, but Polycarp said the entire story was an astrotheological story of the, of the age of Pisces, the two fish. And this is why Jesus feeds the masses with two fish. The two fish are the Piscean symbol for Pisces. And then in Luke he came 20, in the year of Pisces, yeah. supposedly, too, right? That's why they used the symbol of the fish. <laughs> that's exactly right. And the yeah. Pope wears the fish head. <laughs> the fish and, uh, you know, that's why, <laughs> yeah, that's why we say Christianity is a little fishy. The whole thing is because it deals with Pisces, the and, age of Pisces. And the Pope is the grandest official of them all. Oh, fish. Oh, yeah. And, okay. And, yes, official. <laughs> I'm just, uh, but I think it's funny when you begin to see how this the is pope, the official version of the yeah, story. The whole thing is fishy, and the word "none," as I said, "none" is a is a word for the, a fish. But aren't these words also involved in astrology? Like you said, you have a cardinal point. That's right. A exactly. lot, of, and, and none, and I've heard that almost all the words used in the church actually come from 
Oh, absolutely. It all comes from astrology. As a matter of fact, the very word church, you know how many people go to church and have no idea where the word church comes from? Where does it come from? The word church in English comes from a Scottish word in Scotland. The Brits got it from the Scotts. And in Scotland, if you're a Christian, you get up on Sunday morning, you're going to Kirk, K-E-R-K, or K-I-R-K, Kirk of the Valley. We Kirk of the Valley, the little church in the valley. Kirk. K-I-R-K is a church in Scotland. That's why you have in Star Trek Captain Kirk uh, going on the on the ship Enterprise, because that's what the church is. It's a business. It's an enterprise, taking mankind where he's never been before. That's true. They've been taking mankind for years. For about 2,000 years they've been taking them where they've never been before. Yeah, they've taken yeah, they're, they're still taking money. you. They're, they're taking your money and taking everything you own. Yeah. And why are churches called? And so, therefore, Kirk, <laughs> it becomes church in English. But right. Kirk in Scotland goes all the way back to the Knights Templars during the Crusades when the Vatican sent the military into the Middle East to take uh, the, the Jerusalem back. There was a war going on there. They called it the Crusades. Well, in the, in the Middle East, there was a goddess named Circe, or Circe, C-E-R-E-S, C-E-R-E-S, Circe, or Circe. And she was referred to as a goddess, Mother Circe. And so the, the, the Crusaders, the Knights Templars, the Masonic Order of Knights Templars, who were there at the order of the Pope to fight to take back Jerusalem, they learned a lot from the Islamic people. They learned a lot from their enemies. Uh, about their religion, about the religion of the Middle East. And so it became very important to the Knights Templars, this whole religion of Circe. And so they brought that back. And when they came back into England and came back to uh, Europe, they ended up, the, the Knights Templars ended up in Scotland. And yeah. so they brought with them all that stuff that they had learned from the assassins and from the Islamic peoples and all these religions and cults. And another thing, too, about that, Jordan, the stars' names are in Arabic. Yes, that's right. They are in Arabic. Well, what do you mean the so, stars' names are in Arabic? Uh, the stars have Arabic names. Like this gets into that star Merrick, what gets into the real name of Basically, America. The, uh, Merrick is a, is a star system, is a star called Merrick from which we get America. That's where America comes from. It's from Merrick, the star. But anyway, let me go on with this. Uh, so when the Knights Templars came back into uh, Scotland, they brought with them the worship of the of the goddess uh, Circe. And so Circe becomes Mother Circe or Mother Kirk or Mother Church. So Mother mm. Church is Mother Kirk, Mother Circe. Now, that's imp important about that is that Mother Circe and the ancient Greek world, the ancient Greek religion, Mother Circe was a goddess who was able to hypnotize people and take their minds from them, hypnotize them, and under a trance bring them into her home. This is the Greek mythology, Mother Circe. And bring, her, and bring the people into her home after she took their minds and, and manipulated them uh, through magic. Then she would close the door behind them and turn them into animals and feed off of them, eat them and feed off of them. And they would feed her. And so that's exactly what the church has done. The church manipulates people's minds and puts them into a trance. And it's a holy of holies. And you're going before the holies with all the candles and the Lord's presence and all of that. And people get sucked into this and they go into the church, Kirk, Circe, and huh. Mother Church then closes the door behind them and takes away their brain so they can't think, they don't read, they don't understand, they couldn't find their way out of a paper bag, they don't understand anything about theology, religion, God, they can't even read. And so all they know is they're drinking their beer and watching TV and go to church on Sunday. That's all they you know. They about, don't know. You forgot about football. Basketball. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so therefore... Uh, this is why churches are divided into denominations, like fifty and hundreds. Denominations, yeah, right? it's it's all money. It's all. But my, my my point is, <clears throat> with it this information, sense. it it makes sense. But with this information that you're coming forth with, that there was no Christ, yeah, there that was there was no, no Jesus, no. There okay, was no Jesus. okay. So therefore, incidentally, don't look for Jesus to be coming back because he was never here to start with. It's very difficult to make a big comeback when you've never been any place to start with. So Jesus is not going to make a big comeback because he was never here to begin with. So by it's you bringing forth this knowledge, where did astrotheology actually come from? Oh, it came a long time ago. Uh, Zachariah Sitchin and I talked about this a long, a lot of, for many hours. 
The ancient peoples in Sumeria called them the men of yore, Y-O-R-E, the men of yore. The men, they said, there were ancient, ancient gods who came here thousands of years ago and told the humans, the indigenous humans that are here, about the 12 signs of the zodiac and about the astrotheological religions of the ancient peoples who came here. So what we're saying is that astrotheology is the teaching from the heavens who came here a long time ago, thousands and thousands of years ago, and told the prophets and the kings all about this story. And so they took the story and put their own slant on it, and today we call it Christianity. No, it's not the story of Christianity as a metaphor, as a symbolic yeah, but, but by story. By you saying that, then what actually is going on today is everyone is being conned. Yeah, they are. Exactly. They're totally being conned, and they have no idea in the world about it. And most people, I think, realize they're being conned, but like the Germans on the out of Hitler. I don't believe just that most people, most people, I think, would, would, would die for their Savior as opposed to want to believe in, in the astrotheology uh, uh, the in other words, they would, they would rather have the truth. I mean, they would rather have a lie than the truth. Well, that's exactly what the scripture said. Jesus said, I am, uh, I am the light of the world, and the slave is no greater than the master. What they've done to me, they will do to you. So if you're trying to get to the light of truth with the truth of the, and the light, this is why you have 12 jurors in a, in a jury system, the 12 jurors and the 12 apostles. So when they're looking for his remains or his family <laughs> remains or Mary or oh, all that, that's, that's just good for Hollywood. That's, that's Hollywood. That's good for, for business. Keep people agitated to go find the lost Ark of the Covenant. There was no lost Ark of the Covenant. You said and that went you, back to Egypt, right? The Ark of the uh, yeah, Covenant. Yeah, actually yeah, was yeah. It has tw- nothing to do with being Jewish at all, period. Zero. Nothing to do with being Jewish at all. Jews took that from the Egyptians. The Ark of the Covenant in the Hebrew religion is a, is a story. It has no basis, in fact, at all. It's, it's based on the Ark of the Contract. It's called the Ark of the Contract. Go to any good university library and sit down and read about Ark of the Contract. And it was an Ark that was a box that had two handles, that had two poles, and people with the priests would carry it around. And it had two angels or, or seraphim on the top, and this was right. all Egyptian, and it was right. all Egyptian, and, 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 the, and the ark, it had sacred objects inside the ark, but it was totally Egyptian, period. Had nothing to do with Hebrews. So but they the just Hebrews, twisted, it, twisted the yeah, story to their... Yeah, they twisted the story and took it, just like, just like the, the Christians took this whole idea of Jesus dying on the cross, they took that from the Hindus. Because in the, in the Hindu God dies on the cross. Uh, 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 Vishnu, Shiva... Uh, Brahma, Brahma Vishnu, yeah, Brahma yes. Vishnu, Shiva. I mean, there's uh, we could go on for hours about this. Where does this uh, uh, the Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? One are you, of the are you saying they rab- didn't exist either? Look at one of the leading rabbis in America told me many years ago, back in the mid '60s. Uh, I asked him about. I said, Rabbi, is there was there an actual fact? Uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and King David and King Solomon and all these uh, biblical. He said none of them ever existed. Well, what are they doing in Israel where they're up at the wall of the Solomon's wall? Where they're all you're talking about Wall Street? Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, you're talking. Oh. No, they're all over there. And they're all bobbing back and forth, and they've. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, let me tell you what what that means. Well, when you see the uh, when you see the old uh, yeah, they're, bo- uh, they're bobbing, uh, like, they're bobbing back yeah, and forth. Yeah. Do you know why? Why? Because that this don't say is, they have to use a restroom. Don't, huh? No, why? Why are they bobbing back and forth? They're bobbing back and forth because they're mimicking sex. The sexual. Oh come on now! They're up against. <laughs> they're mimicking sex up against. Yeah, uh, that's sex up against the wall because the because God and and the Hebrew was both male and female, and so the presence of God to a Hebrew to the Jews asked them, is a feminine principle. And the feminine principle of their God, before Jehovah. Before they changed it to Jehovah. Yeah, and before, the feminine, uh, yeah. It was a feminine principle. Okay. And it was called Shekinah. And so, not Hekinah, Shekinah. Shekinah <laughs> is a feminine principle of creation. And so, the, the male priests and the male Jews are, are mimicking the sexual act when they are back and forth, bobbing back and forth. They're having sex with the Shekinah. That's the fact. That's but a fact Jordan, on that point, there were no J's until the printing press. Uh, J was an I. So this thing called Jew, I mean, it was really 
I U. That's right. I U. I O. The I representing the phallus and the O representing the female. So, so wait a minute. So, That's right. That's so the wait I the O. When I, I see them bobbing back and forth on the That's wall, they're having, having sex, sex with Shekinah. With Shekinah. Exactly. That's what. So it if means. I go up to a, a rabbi and I say, "Excuse me, how, how was Shekinah today?" He's going to know. Yeah, what right. Yeah. Is. You get a little something today? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Did you lose a little bit in the pants there. <laughs> I mean, what's happening? I said, notice you got a couple of glaze stains here. <laughs> you painted the. Yeah. I saw you painted the wall today. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that's what it is. The back and forth, uh, 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 the back and forth motion is the sexual act. Now, do they actually know this? I mean, it's just like. Oh no, no, no! The the the, the, just... the the rabbis all know this. They all know that that's what it means. They are mimicking having sex with God. They are sexually encountering. Well, I can believe she- it because the nuns are married to God. Well, of that, course. That's why they have their wedding. Of course. So Shekinah might be, I mean, why not? Well, that's what I said. So if you have a nun and a Shekinah there, I mean, he's getting, (laughs) they get a little bit of both. (laughs) Yeah, like She ain't getting none and he's getting something from none that ain't there, so. That's right. The nun's not getting none, she's getting some. (laughs) Yeah. It's, a, it's an incredible story of sexual symbolism in Judaism, Christianity. Let's get into Yahweh. Yahweh is what now? You told me Yahweh is the combustion. Yeah, Yahweh of... is a, a huge story about Yahweh. Uh, Yahweh goes all the way back to sun god, and then it, it's connected to the worship of the moon, mm-hmm. and then at one time it's connected to the worship of uh, the planet Saturn. But Yahweh, uh, the spelling of the Hebrew god with the four Hebrew letters is... Um, Called tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton. Okay, yes. but actually it's tetragrammaton, A T O N. The Aton was the e- Egyptian god of the sun. So the four symbols in the Hebrew for it is called tetragrammaton, because the Aton on tetragrammaton is the sun god of Egypt. This is why Indiana Jones, when he's going to look for the lost Ark of the Covenant of the Hebrews, where does he actually find the lost Ark of the Covenant? Where does he actually, in point of fact, find it? Egypt. He doesn't find it in the Middle East and in the Holy Land of Jerusalem. There's nothing holy in the Holy Land. He finds it at um, Petra. At, uh, he found it in, no, no, that's that's the Christian. That was the cup of the cup of oh, the yeah, grail. The challenge. Yeah, uh, he finds but, it. The, but the Holy Ark was found in Egypt. In Egypt. Egypt was the Holy Ark. Why? Because Steven Spielberg has a lot of things, but stupid is not one of them. And he knows that the entire story of the Holy Ark of the Covenant is an Egyptian story. And so if you're going to find the uh, the Holy Ark, you better go to where it is. It's in Egypt. It has nothing to do with Hebrews whatsoever. There was no Hebrew Ark. There was an Egyptian Ark called the Ark of the Contract. Well, a contract in Hebrew is a covenant, so we call it the Ark of the Covenant. So the Christians took the spinoff of the Ark of the Covenant, or or the Egyptian uh, from, the, from the Jews, and the Jews, Christians turned it to the, they twisted their story on it. And yeah, of course. And, and, and of course, while well, uh, the Jews are twisting their stories, they, they, they twist it all around, take something from Egypt, take a, a lot of stuff in the Hebrew, uh, in the Hebrew religion comes from India, comes from the Hindus, the very idea of, uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham is the one man that all three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all revere the presence of, of Abraham. Abraham. He was the father of all of all of it. There was no Abraham. Abraham never existed. Therefore, so, so the whole book itself... The whole thing is... It, the, the whole thing that you're saying is just a, a great comic book. I mean, there's right, lessons right. to be learned from it, but it's like... the. It's the great. It's just a bunch of stories. It's the greatest story ever told. So it's it was not written by the hand of God. No, 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 no. Written, uh, or interpreted from. No, no, no. It was written by men, and we and we know who wrote. We know actually know who actually, in fact, wrote the Book of Revelation. It wasn't Apostle John because there was no Apostle John. Well, who wrote it then? Oh, that's that's a whole a whole another story of actually who, in fact, actually wrote the Book of Revelation. It wasn't John. We know that for sure because there was no Apostle John. There well, was no John, the writer of a Revelation. There well, was no man. Well, Jordan, the uh, the Old Testament, you're uh, the writer of that. You're getting into Solomon, Bar Isaac, alias Rashid. That's it. Solomon, Bar Isaac. Alien yeah, but when we say that, we're not going back <coughs> 2,000 years, are we, or 3,000 no, no, years? No, we're going to the time of the Crusades, when time this whole Crusades. story actually factually and point of fact began. And that also gets into Eleanor of Aquitaine, which gets into maritime amity law, 
and the Hanseatic League. That's right. Hanseatic League, the Germans, the Holy Roman so, Empire. So wait a minute. The Old Testament itself is not over 3,000 no, years old? No, not at all. No, the Old Testament but itself. we got to prove that, too. Yeah, the the, oh, the yeah. Old Testament is not as an A.D. The whole idea of ancient Israel never existed. There was no such a thing as ancient Israel. It never existed. So there's no Garden of Eden? No. Well, I don't know about that. That's <laughs> different. That could have been on Atlantis. But there was no ancient Israel. Well, when do we get into the story now of Adam and Eve, the book of Genesis? Oh, I know. It's, it's incredible. You call it what? Not Genesis. You call it what? Gen what? Uh, Gen Isis. Yeah, Gen Isis. Well, that's what it came from. Gen Isis. Gen Isis. From Isis, the goddess in, in, in Egypt. Gen Isis. From which we get Genesis. I mean, you, you, you know, you, there's so much that needs to be known about religion and theology, which is very simple. All you do is go to a library and read the book, read the reference book, encyclopedia, and read the Catholic encyclopedia. Go to the Jewish encyclopedia in the, in the, in the universities. Hebrew University has the Encyclopedia Judica, the Jewish encyclopedia. Go read it. And and read what the, the Catholic Encyclopedia says, and read what all the the gen, uh, the American uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, Americana. Go read the reference books, and it will tell you where all of these religions came from. There was no ancient Jerusalem. There was no ancient. There was no ancient Israel. There was an ancient Jerusalem, but there was no ancient Israel, and the holy people of the prophets and all that. None of it ever existed. And there's there are two guys in in uh, in Israel today, and I've said this on other programs. Two guys in Israel today that are referred to as uh, as uh, both of them are highly respected. One is an archaeologist. And I can't remember the other the other one, but they were both highly respected in their fields, and they wrote a book called Unearthing the Bible, and in which the book this is written by two Zionist Jews in Israel. I believe on, one's a professor of archaeology named Funkelstein or Finkelstein, Finkelstein, something like that. And they wrote a book called Unearthing the Bible, in which they say basically. All of the stories in the Old Testament are just that, those stories. There was no there was no Moses, there was no Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King Solomon, King David, none of that's all stories. There's no proof that any of that, especially King Solomon. They 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 picked that one for two. There was no King Solomon, it never existed. They said Solomon was just a, a figment, uh to it was a metaphor. Saul Om on. Solomon is S O L Latin for the sun. Om, O M, Hindu for the principle of creation. So and basically, on is you're saying it's, it's just a big show. It's just a big charade <clears throat> when, the, when the Pope is up there and he's reading from the Gospel of St. John and he's up there and he's Dagon, fish head on, and it's all dressed in his collar, fish, fish head on. It's all corporations. It's all big money. It's all the show. It's all Hollywood. But you realize that if people <clears throat> were to believe in what you're saying, it would re-revolutionize -re -re everything. Everything would just be upside down. It would flip. Well, I would think Churches the people would... of the world would be welcoming that. It's about time we flip this crap that's going on, all the lies and deception and banking. Uh, I don't know, George. I mean, you know, the Pope, Rome, up there waving around. Not much different than Elton John being the pinball wizard in concert with the big shoes. and you know. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Just, it's just, it's just sex, drugs, out. and rock and roll at a different tempo. That's it. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's all it is. The, the, the priests wear long robes, and why long robes? Because that's a woman's dress, and they're male inside. That's why uh, the, the priest represents the Shekinah and the Christian tradition, because he's representing the, the sexual impulse inside the female wearing the dress. And so he's the male inside the female. And so he's wearing so he's a dress. he's not doing anything wrong with all these scandals. No, no, that's right. Nothing at all. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Paul, the, God the, the, God the God of love. The God of love. That's yeah. right. And incidentally, the people will tell you, all Christians will tell you, well, God is love. No, it's not love. And love is all you need. <clears throat> no. God is Jove. J-O-V-E. Jove. Going back to Jupiter. Jupiter was Dios. Jupiter in Latin is Dios which is God in, in, in Latin and Spanish, God is Dios. Dios is Job. This is why, uh, I mean, Jupiter, the, the planet Jupiter. Thursday. Well, 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 Jordan, on that word Jupiter, once again, in the ancient world, the J did not exist. That's right. It, it was, was Iopater. So it was Iopeter. So I-O, which would relate to Jew, I-O, male inside the female, I -O -P -P Petar, the phallus. I O P T R. That's right, and that's what we and that, that's what we get the word Palestine. The very word Palestine. We talk about the Palestinians. Pala, 
because it goes back to Fala, Fala, Pala, the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was a big cock. He was a big, big male in town. He was the big boss of all bosses. Well, Jordan, on that point, you take the word colonel. There's an R in the word colonel. Yet when you look at how that word spell, I mean, it's pronounced with an R, but when you look at it, there's no L in the word current. I mean, there's no R in the word colonel, yet it's pronounced with an R, which tells you R's and L's are interchangeable. So Pharaoh will become fallow or phallus. That's right. So Paula, Stein. Stein in Hebrew is a stone, a rock. <clears throat> Paula goes back to Fala, which is a phallic stone, <laughs> which is a... Well, so Paula Stein means a male erection hard as a rock. Well, a cock it's is hard as a rock. That's so. right. It's hard as a rock. Paula yeah. Stein. So when you see the Pharaoh coming, you're about to get the royal shaft. That's right it. where it counts, right where the sun doesn't shine. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is sex, drugs, rock and roll, words, terms, symbols, emblems. But it all basically has to do with the reproduction of life, because that is the bottom line. Only God can create life. Well, that's what the male phallic does. That's what males and females do. They create life. And so well, the whole idea of religion is sex, drugs, rock and roll, and to add the brilliance of the wisdom to it, astral theology, the rule of the heavens, the sun, the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 okay. followers of the great sun. That's why you have 12 jurors in a courtroom, because they help bring the truth to light. From the light of truth. Well, Jordan, take that word God, then reverse that word. That becomes dog, as in dogma. We all know dogma has something to do with God. Yeah. Now you have a word called uh, dog, God backwards. Well, G's and K's are interchangeable because you have the word gnosis, which starts with a G, That's right. equals knowledge. So take dog backwards, put a K on it, you get doc. And then in the ancient world, vowels were of no consequence. So doc can very easily, you can change an O to an I. What's doc become? It becomes dick. That's right. I Which mean, is, this is why Solomon, Peter, uh, uh, I, I remember reading the reference works at the, at the seminary libraries. Peter was called Simon, Simon Peter. And, uh, and it goes back to the phallus. The Peter. That's what we would say today, guys. Uh, guys, but this Peter. So why well, are they prostrating themselves on the altar when they're giving their life to God? When yeah. They become a priest. Well, that's what they did in the Hindu, and that's what they do in uh, many of the old ancient mystery schools. They lay down and prostrate, prostrate themselves before their God. So you're saying it's their son? Oh yeah. So the son. That's what we do. So you're we saying it's basically sun worship. Well, of all course this. it is. Well, I mean, when you go out to the beach, what do you do? You lay out there on the pad. You lay out there in the sun. You're laying out and worshiping the sun. Now, this you actually feel that they know that Jesus is just a metaphor. These yes, the priests. I am totally convinced of that. The priests I, actually know yes, that. The priests absolutely know that because I've talked to way too many of them, and they each one of them that okay. I have talked to, uh, you know, they they figure. You already, you know, some might as well tell you, because you already know anyway. Yeah, you're right. So what? And I mean, what do you mean, so what? Why don't you tell the people the real truth and really do something spiritual for the people and teach them, you know, something about the spirit? And I said, no, no, we can't do that. This is a business. So if we go out and tell the people the truth, they don't want to hear the truth. Give us Barabbas. That's right. Yeah. That's why there's a story in the Bible where Pontius Pilate brings Jesus and Barabbas, a prisoner, out. And he says to the whole town, I am, uh, according to your custom, I, I can release a prisoner to you, one, one prisoner each year. So today I have two prisoners. I have Jesus, I have Barabbas, who everybody knows is a thief and a crook and a liar. And we have Jesus, who is the truth and the light. Which one am I to give you? And it says in the Bible, the whole town with one voice that give us Barabbas. That's a metaphor. It's a symbolic story telling you that when the, when the powers that be, Pontius Pilate, the governor, he says to the world, he says to the country, I have, I can give you one of two things. I can give you the truth and the light, or I can give you Barabbas, a, a murdering, lying, pimp, a criminal. Which one do you want? Always, the people will always say, give us Barabbas. In other words, give us the lies and the bullshit and all the crap and all the stories. <coughs> we don't want the truth and the light. That's the fact. That's the real truth. Like uh, like the movie says, son, you, uh, who was it? You can't handle uh, the truth. You can't handle the truth. And also, too, Jordan, the truth might just be, look, I'm the Pope and I'm tired of you morons. I'm going to sleep. Bye. That's it. 
I'm the yeah, boss of the all truth. bosses. This uh, <laughs> we we could talk about religion for hours. There's, there's so much people don't know. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for being with us. We're running a little over time. But as you can see, there's so much to religion that we haven't been told, that the people haven't been told. So I want to welcome you to come back again because we want to talk about this subject more. It's about somebody. It's about time somebody uh, throws some light on the darkness of what's going on in churches and religion. I'm Jordan Maxwell. I want to thank my friend Mike for being with me and thank my you. other friend. My other friend, who you will never see. Because he has a face for radio. <laughs> he has a face that's so ugly, a mother couldn't handle it. So, anyway, uh, thank you again for helping to contribute to our program and helping us financially. And we live, we live, uh, our whole program uh, operates on your contributions. We want to thank you and we'll talk to you again the next time. Jordan Maxwell for the Jordan Maxwell Show.